Welcome back everyone to Formula One 2021 and welcome to your qualifying report for the Styrian Grand Prix. 12 months ago, at this exact Grand Prix, wet conditions gave us one of the best qualifying sessions of the season. This year, it's been Hamilton, Verstappen, Hamilton, Verstappen, back and forth between the two of them, with a sprinkling of Ferrari greatness in there as well. Who would be on pole position for this weekend's Grand Prix? As always, if you are new, feel free to subscribe. Spoiler warning for today's qualifying session. But without further ado, here are your results. For the first time since 2013, Red Bull have back-to-back -back pole positions. Verstappen, for the first time in his Formula 1 career, has back-to-back -back pole positions. The Flying Dutchman made it look simply lovely. Easy, in fact, comfortably in front of the two Mercedes and surely tomorrow has a fantastic chance of claiming victory. It was Valtteri Bottas in second place with Lewis Hamilton having a messy final run in Q3 but with a three-place grid penalty for Valtteri Bottas, Hamilton versus Verstappen again will be on the front row for tomorrow's race. Lando Norris, his best quali of the season, saw the British driver qualify fourth, but with Bottas' penalty, will start third. A similar story for Sergio Perez, fifth for the Mexican driver, but will start fourth with Valtteri Bottas' penalty. Bottas will start fifth, which means behind him and alongside him is Alpha Tauri's Pierre Gasly for the sixth time this season, starting in the top six and is in front of two-time 2021 pole sitter Charles Leclerc in seventh. It was a second Q3 career appearance for Yuki Tsunoda in eighth. He was in front of Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll, who rounded out the top ten. It was so close, so so close for George Russell, but it wasn't quite to be here in Styria. Nought point nought nought eight. Eight thousandths of a second was G Russ off making it through into Q3. But as I always say, tire choice, starting 11th, having the option for the alternate strategy is a very, very tasty prospect for the race tomorrow. Carlos Sainz was P12, not quite able to keep on the pace of teammate Charles Leclerc. A very similar story for Daniel Ricciardo, again struggling with qualifying in his new McLaren 13th for the Australian driver. And though Sebastian Vettel finished 14th, a lap time deleted put pay to any chance of Q3 at the end of Q2. Antonio Giovinazzi made it through and once again out-qualified teammate Raikkonen in 15th. Nicholas Latifi has one of his best qualifying to finish in 16th in front of Esteban Ocon. A massive disappointment from today's session. We will have to talk about that a little bit later on. He's in front of Kimi Raikkonen in 18th and the two Haas cars round out your field. Schumacher in front of Mazepin in 19th and 20th. And as we move over to our qualifying report, a quieter session today, but very much a session of importance. The title fight is well and truly on, and tomorrow our two championship challengers, Verstappen and Hamilton, once again will share the front row. But what will be slightly different for this weekend's race is Lando Norris will start third and be that bit of buffer between the two teammates, Bottas and Perez. But today's performance from your championship leader, Max Verstappen, faultless, class of the field, made no mistake, starts the race on the medium tyres with Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas. Sergio Perez, who qualified fifth and will start fourth, does not have that luxury. He will start on the soft tyres. And I just wonder, are we going to see a repeat of France where Red Bull kind of tried to keep Perez out for as long as possible? Or are they going to do something completely different? Try a two-stop strategy, potentially with Sergio Perez. Definitely something to keep an eye on in those opening stages. But no doubt, Verstappen comfortably taking pole position today. No worries from him. About a two-tenth gap in front of Lewis Hamilton, which in all reality doesn't seem like a big gap. But when you look at the fact that this lap time is only a one minute three, that gap of two tenths is pretty sizable. 
and at a venue where Mercedes won both races here last season, though Max is normally pretty quick in Austria, the Red Bull Ring, of course, it's a great start to the weekend. And once again, Mercedes will be worried. And they've got every right to do so. Once again, they're lacking that one or two tenths, that little bit of finesse to get pole position. And actually, Lewis Hamilton has come away with a third place, will start the race tomorrow in second. But that was a scruffy session from the seven-time world champion. Maybe sessions a little bit harsh, but definitely that final lap in Q3 was not the normal, composed, precise Hamilton that we're used to in qualifying. He decided to make a few overtakes. And when I say a few overtakes, almost the whole field at the end and while everyone was preparing for their final run. And whether he wanted to do that to avoid yellow flags... Austria is a circuit where we can see that happen at the end of qualifying. It happened last year with Valtteri Bottas on his route to pole position. Maybe Mercedes thought he wasn't safe. Maybe he thought he needed to put the foot down a little bit to warm up the tyres. Whatever it was, it was peculiar. And the lap that followed for Hamilton was scruffy, made a big mistake coming through the final couple of corners and didn't improve on his lap. Now, with Valtteri Bottas, who all weekend long has been slightly slower than Hamilton, the fact that Bottas was two tenths off, could, could Hamilton have done it? It would have been tight. It definitely would have been tight. Verstappen was a different animal today. Simply lovely is the way he put it. I, I really do like that phrase. But however you want to paint the picture, Mercedes really do have to find a couple of tenths. They've got some work to do. But it's not all over. They had a race they could have won last time out in Paul Ricard. They didn't start on pole. They've got both cars starting on the medium tyres and will hope if, big if, Bottas can get past Lando Norris in those opening stages of the race and Sergio Perez is unable to do so, they will want to really put that pressure on Verstappen. Having two cars on the same strategy as Verstappen, is that going to be helpful or... Is that going to force them to make a few mistakes like we saw in France? Lots of talking points, but we do have eight more teams, of course. And once again, one of the stars of qualifying has been one of the superstars all year long. Lando Norris qualifies P4, will start the race P3. And to be just two tenths, two and a bit tenths of pole position, you really can't ask for much more. He was close in Imola. In the second round of the season, track limits put paid to that on that particular occasion. And today was five hundredths, really, of getting on the front row. An awesome job from Lando. But whilst Lando's consistency continues to amaze me, the inconsistency of Danny Rick is now firmly one of the biggest mysteries of the season. And after what was a pretty great weekend for Ricardo in Paul Ricard... Now we come to a circuit that requires that braking finesse a little bit more. And once again, it's that aspect of this new McLaren he is just not gelling with at the moment. 13th isn't great. Outqualified by George Russell in the Williams makes it even worse. Of course, there's an opportunity for points this weekend, but it's not a great start from Danny Rick. It's 7th for Charles Leclerc, 12th for Carlos Sainz. It's not a terrible day. It's not a great day. And I wouldn't even say it's a middle of the road day because the big issue with Ferrari this year hasn't been their qualifying. They've got two pole positions. The issue has been their tyre wear. And if tomorrow we see the exact same pattern once again, Leclerc getting into Q3, Sainz starting on the alternate strategy, but both of them not having the options to move forward, it's going to be a really long season for the Tifosi. However, this strange, all right result in qualifying today could indicate that they're going for a slightly more conservative qualifying route in the hope they look after those tyres that little bit more in the race and aim for points for both cars in tomorrow's race. Keep your eye on Ferrari. It could be good. I've got a funny feeling it could be a similar story to Paul Ricard. I'll move on, Ferrari fans, because that's not what you wanted to hear from my mouth today. We'll move swiftly on, swiftly on, because I've realised I've missed a team, and it's Alfa Tauri, Pierre Gasly, 
continues to be awesome. I know you will want me to shut up at this point. I have been so impressed with this man in qualifying this year. Top six for the sixth time in eight races in an Alpha Tauri. That's nuts. That is so, so good. But you know my feelings on Gasly so far this year in quali. And it's the same again today. So what I will do is focus on Yuki Tsunoda. Who it's been a whirlwind of a season so far for Yuki. And so far this weekend, I think it's probably been his best so far in Formula 1. Through to Q3 for the second time in his F1 career. The first time he did it, well, it didn't end so great, did it? At the end of Baku Q3. That being said, today, didn't really put a foot wrong. No incidents, no crashes, no wide moments, no trips to the gravel that we're used to with Yuki Tsunoda in qualifying. And to bounce back from Paul Ricard, where he did cause that red flag, started from the pit lane, to get it all hooked up nicely, to be two tenths off teammate Pierre Gasly, is fantastic. Yes, this is a circuit that's going to suit the Alpha Tauri car with the Honda engine a little bit more than normal, but still, he got the job done. And when you've got guys like Ricardo, Sainz, that we've mentioned already, that weren't able to get through to Q3, but have that wealth of experience of how to drive a Formula 1 car, I think Sonoda did a really good job today. And Alpha Tauri, once again, are putting themselves in the position to get double points tomorrow. And looking at their race pace from Friday, they have a great opportunity to do exactly that in the race tomorrow. It's ninth for Fernando Alonso. He seems to be really building a bit of a season now. I want to be careful what I say because Alpine have been in that no man's land with Aston Martin this year. And whereas Aston Martin have combated their up and down performances with some really innovative strategies that have got them more points than that car really deserves at this stage of the season, Alpine have been lacking that bit of sting. And I just wonder tomorrow with Alonso in ninth, but with cars like Ricardo, Sainz, even George Russell being on that alternate strategy, Vettel as well, having just mentioned Aston Martin, I think Alpine could miss out tomorrow. But Fernando, his season's building, his form is really starting to turn now, which is great. 17th of Ocon, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Because so far this year, Ocon has been really solid. Pretty good, in fact. And those couple of races in Spain and Portugal, wasn't it? Fifth and sixth on the grid, I believe it was. Really started to highlight that Ocon, now he's had a year under his belt at Renault. Now they've turned into Alpine. He can be their number one driver. But since he's got that three-year contract extension, it's kind of crumbled a little bit. Last time out in Q2 was my driver ones to watch for the weekend. But in the race, got overtaken by George Russell and finished worse off than he started. Thankfully, it's going to be pretty difficult to do that tomorrow considering he starts 17th. But quite frankly, 17th isn't good enough. Just in front of Raikkonen behind both Williams, even Latifi, even though Latifi had a pretty great quality today, that's not good enough from Ocon. And fingers crossed he can have a great race tomorrow, but also turn around this bit of a dip in form we've seen over the last couple of weekends. Aston Martin, doing very much what Aston Martin do. One car into the top 10 with Lance Stroll. Brilliant. That's what they want to be seeing. They want to see their car fighting with the very best, but they did struggle in Q3. Stroll over a 10th off 9th place Fernando Alonso, which again isn't massive. But when you put it in the context of this circuit, it is quite a big gap. Sebastian Vettel starts a little bit further down in 14th place. But as I mentioned prior, this team knows how to do strategy. You watch. I mentioned it last time, didn't I? In my race review, you watch Aston Martin do the most ridiculous overcut tomorrow with Sebastian Vettel and Lance Stroll. And you watch them get some mega points for it. It's crazy what they've been doing this year. But it's been working. So if it's all right with you, all season long, I've had a go at Aston. Said their cars had no pace. I don't know what they're doing. Come race day, they get it bang on. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut with Aston Martin today and move swiftly on to Williams. George Russell, 11th place. Eight thousandths off Q3, which 
between you and me, we'll keep it. We'll keep it quiet. We'll keep it quiet for this bit. It's actually really good. It's it's really good. Knowing he had the pace to get in there today, that's a tiny little steering input, a tiny delay on throttle and braking. He could have been in Q3. He knows that. He will get confidence, and the Williams team will get confidence from that. But crucially, he's got that alternate strategy. And come race day tomorrow, if he started 10th, I wouldn't be confident he would score points. Starting 11th, though I think there's quicker cars behind him, there is a chance. And he wouldn't have got that if he got through to Q3. And with teammate Latifi, not quite able to get into Q2. However, the pace he showed and the fact he's in front of Esteban Ocon, I think shows a really strong weekend for Williams and proves... I've got to be careful I don't jinx it, proves they can get points tomorrow. And looking at the season as a whole, now we're in Austria, it seems like Williams and Alfa Romeo have switched positions. Alfa, traditionally this year, have been on the fringes of points, the fringes of Q3, and today wasn't really the case. Raikkonen, again, out in Q1, 18th place is in a real dip of form at the moment, but on the flip side, Antonio Giovinazzi continues his great form once again through to Q2. Once again, outqualifies Kimi Raikkonen and is really trying his best to keep that seat for next season. And for Haas, the two rookies, Schumacher outqualifies Mazepin again in 2021. However, a quiet day sees both cars once again start P19 and P20. Before we go then, driver of the day and ones to watch. Quite a few drivers to pick from today. I've gone with George Russell on multiple occasions and Pierre Gasly this year for quality driver of the day. But today, I'm going with Lando Norris. Fourth place in quality, almost 10 positions in front of Ricardo. It will become 10 positions tomorrow once that grid place is applied to Valtteri Bottas. That's a cracking effort to be two tenths off pole position, credit where credit's due, and the fact I've not given him driver of the day so far this year in quali, it's about time I did that. So Norris, my driver of the day, and ones to watch, of course, it's George Russell. Number 63 starts P11, Valtteri Bottas. That penalty was applied today, but I think he's got some pace in that Mercedes, and I think he could cause a few headaches in the race tomorrow. Ricardo, 13th. I think he can work his way forward on the grid. And for the second, the second week in a row, you don't really want to be here. But for the second week in a row, my racing reviews wants to watch is Esteban Ocon. 17th, says it all really. There's a lot of work to do. However, if the Frenchman wants to score points, if he wants to put on one of the performances of the season so far, that's cool with me. The race tomorrow at two o'clock British time, the Styrian Grand Prix. I'm just looking at news now that Yuki Tsunoda has got a three-place penalty, so George Russell will start in the top 10. I'll put a comment, a pinned comment, to keep you up to date with that one. But for now, that's it from me. Thank you all very much for watching. To keep up to date with all Formula 1 2021, you know what to do. Subscribe button is down below. Hit that like button. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.